First of all, when you turn your computer, you're going to be taken to your main screen here. Well, there's a techie, geeky term for your main screen. It's called the desktop. So if anybody tells you to say to go to your desktop, well, just turn your computer and it's right there. On your desktop, you'll find things like maybe your computer icon. If you don't have it on your computer, I'll show you how to add it. Also, other things like folders and files and the garbage can. Think of your desk at home or at the office where you can put sheets of paper on and pens. Well, this is the desktop, the virtual desktop on the computer, which you can put a garbage can on your desktop to help clean up any files or folders that you don't want on your main screen. So, since you were able to purchase the training videos here, I assume that you're at least a little bit proficient with your mouse, but hopefully I can show you some shortcuts that you may not be aware of. But to get started at the very basics, let's go ahead. Notice the difference between our right and left mouse clicks. For example, I've got a bunch of icons here, and I can go ahead and click on one of them with my left mouse button, and it highlights it right. I can click on any others, and it highlights it. Now, if I want to select multiple icons, I can just hold down my control key, and click on additional icons and it selects all three of them. Now why would I want to select all three of them? Maybe I'd like to move all three at the same time. How do you do that? Well first let's click off in a blank area to unselect them and let's start with moving one at a time like my garbage can. Click on it once, it's highlighted. Then I can go ahead and click and drag it holding down my left mouse button somewhere up here and let go and it puts it up at the top here, towards the top. And then I can click and hold and drag it down. Now if I want to move multiple icons or files at the same time, just hold down the control key after you select the initial one. Then I can go ahead and click Exercises and New Folder. And then I can click on any one of these of the three that are selected, hold down my left mouse button, and drag, and I'm going to be moving all three of them. Now the Recycle Bin is behind uh, the sidebar here. You can see when I hover over it, the sidebar boundaries opens up, and we'll cover that later in a later training video. To move them back, I want to make sure that I have the still three highlighted and then click on any one of them and drag them and put them back to where they were and then click off in a blank area to deselect them. Now all these icons are either shortcuts to other programs or they actually have uh, like these folders here actually have documents and images or movies in them I don't know but one way to find out is to double click on one of these folders to open it up so you can see right here the manila folder outline and then inside it's got some pages that means there's something in there go ahead and double click on it really fast and then it opens up the folder, and in the folder, in the details pane here, you can see how many um, files, documents, or other folders I have. Let's count them up. We've got one, two, three, four, five, right? Now what are they? Are they documents? Are they spreadsheets? Are they images? What are they? Well, to give you a clue, you can see the little icons over here. Uh, mine are small, but you can change the views by clicking on the drop-down arrow, which we'll cover a little bit later on, but to give you an idea, how about if I made them like bigger, like medium? Well, medium icons, I can actually see the blue W here, which means Microsoft Word. There's Microsoft Word document that I can type in text. There's an Excel spreadsheet. It's Microsoft Excel because it's got the green X and the little green icon here. And you can see the previews of images there. But if I change my views by clicking on the drop down arrow and going back to, let's say, a smaller icon, maybe list, it can't really preview those pictures. So it gives me some generic um, picture, like you can see on those little clouds here for my smiling picture and then for my child computer little clouds there you can see down the details pane you can preview that in any case to keep it simple we'll cover this in a later training video I wanted to show you what types of programs that can be in a, in a folder what type of programs or documents you can store so to close out of this folder I can go ahead in the upper right hand corner and click on the X there are other ways to open up documents files and folders remember you can double click to open it up and then click out to close you can also right click Anytime you right click it's going to give you a shortcut menu just like this. Depending on what you right click on it's going to be a different shortcut menu. For example when I right click it says what do you want to do with this folder? Do you want to open it? So if I move my mouse up over the open and then I want to go ahead and left click and it opens up. I'll close out of this and I'll go ahead and right click on the folder again and let's look at the properties. When I left click on the properties it basically gives me the details of that folder or document that I right clicked on. What are the properties? It says it contains six files. Well wait a second. Let me go ahead and close out of here, or you can click cancel, either one will do. And let me double click, or right click, and go up and left click on open, and count this again. One, two, three, four, five. And it says five items here. Well, how come it says five here, but when I close out and I right click and go to properties and left click on properties, it says there's six? Well, what you don't know, but in advanced training videos, is that there can be hidden files within your folders, and apparently one of them's hidden. Go ahead and close out, double click to open it up, 
and what we can do is we can turn these on or off to show hidden files and folders. Usually Windows Vista will keep some of the files hidden because if you delete the wrong file you could actually freeze up or destroy your computer because some files are programs in there that keep your computer running so you can appreciate why you may not want to do that. The other thing is is that you can actually hide some of your own files and folders from prying eyes but keep in mind if they're hidden and they're smart enough to right click on one of them and left click on properties they can say aha there's six files in here and then click cancel and double click open it up there's only five so somebody's hiding something and like I said it's a later training video we'll keep it simple here another shortcut I want to show you maybe something you're not aware of is that instead of closing out of the window here by clicking on the close button I can actually hold down the control key on the keyboard and hit the letter W and that will close any active window not only on folders but also files and we'll cover files a little bit later on so for example if I go ahead and I double click exercises it opens up the window if I right click on new folder and go up to left click on open opens up the second window and you can see that this window that's in the forefront here is a deeper color versus the one in the back which means the one that's lighter in the back is faded it's not active because you can click and drag the tops of these around can't you holding down your left mouse button and you can see that this one's just a little bit darker probably not by much but this is the active window so again I want to use the shortcut keys to close out of these windows so I can hold down the control and hit the letter W closes that one automatically this one's a little bit bolder the the bar up here that means it's the active window so if I control W it closes out of that as well now like I said depending on what you right click on you're gonna get different shortcut options so for example let me open up the exercise folder by double clicking on it and remember when I right click on the folder it gives me the open option I'm gonna click off in a blank area to close the shortcut and then I'm gonna come over here and let's right click on one of the images here like the child here when I right click on it does it give me open no, it gives me preview. So like I said, depending on what files or folders you right click on, it's going to give you a different shortcut menu here. And when I left click on preview, it opens up the image to preview it. And then I can go ahead and close out of here. Of course, keep in mind that you can't preview a folder. All you can do is when you right click is open it up, hence the different types of options. Go ahead and close out of the window here. And then click off in a blank area so this is no longer highlighted. So I'll click and now I have nothing selected so I can move my mouse around freely without interacting with what I have highlighted or selected. You can change the settings on your clock if you haven't noticed but in the lower right hand corner you've got a clock here when you hover over it also gives you the day and time which is pretty nice simply left click on that and it opens up the opportunity for you to change date and time settings link when you click on it, it opens up another window then next you have to click on the change date and time button another click and it opens up that window. Here you can change the date and also you can change the time. So let's say mm, I want it to be July 4th. Right now you can see it's highlighted in July 2nd as today's date, but I can go to the 4th, that's highlighted, and then I can also change the time. You can see the little ticker moving around of uh, the second hand. I don't recommend changing the seconds, but you want to click somewhere in the minutes or the hours. Once you click in the hours, you can use the up arrow to go up one hour or down to go down one hour. So let's go up to 11 and then when you click in the minutes you can go up by one minute or down by one minute when you're finished go ahead and click OK click OK and then look in the lower right hand corner you can see that I've changed the time it used to be 1057 now it's 1157 and it's July 4th which it's not so I need to left click go back to change the time and settings to change the date and time go back to July 2nd and then click in the hour field and click the down arrow and then it updates it to 10 current correct time click OK click OK fabulous it updated everything I'm back to where I am finally in previous versions of Windows like Windows XP 98 2000 they had a start button down here didn't they well Microsoft Windows Vista in all the different types of Vista premium home basic ultimate they have the little logo button so now they're brainwashing us to look at their logo now instead of a start button in any case when you hover over it it does pop up with the start a place of start and the whole purpose of the start button is that when you click on it within the start button it will contain menus and all programs of all the applications or software that's installed on your computer so let's go ahead and click on it over to the left hand side we have got a list of all recently used programs in fact down here if you want to look at all the programs that are available not just the ones you recently used here in the recently used pane you can click on the all programs and it pushes us over to the next level or sub level and here's a list of all the different programs here scrolling up you can see I have more programs and I can go back to the main menu or where I started when I first clicked on the start button which is the most recent view 
and you'll cover this in later training videos but like I said these are all the programs and then the other thing we want to talk about is the control panel so besides the programs that you use you can actually control your computer for those of you who are codependent and very controlling people you might like this if you go ahead and you left click on the control panel it opens up and these are the settings that you can change for your computer to control the functionality and the features of your computer for example you can actually create other user accounts that people can log into on the same computer with different um, username and passwords so they're not messing with your files there's your parental controls you can set up so you can set um, accounts for your children at that limits the time that they can use on the computer and what websites they can go to you can personalize the appearance like instead of just a blue background here you can actually put very fancy pretty pictures and we'll show you that in later training videos there's more than one way to do things here like we changed our clock down here you can also click on here and change it you can uninstall programs as well so if you accidentally installed a program or your child downloaded a program that was inappropriate you can come in here and uninstall it of course we're not talking about viruses or naughty programs that come in and secretly try to work in the background that you may not be able to uninstall because it's taking over your computer we're talking about obvious programs here. In later training videos we'll talk about those virus programs or antivirus programs. You can also look at your printers, you can install printers, you can uninstall printers, and your security settings, etc. So anything you want to control the appearance and customization of your Windows Vista experience, the control panel is where you want to go. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel, get notified of the latest videos, and for only $2 a month, you can have access to all my Microsoft Office training videos.